Hello again Year 5, welcome to Maths this week. We're going to be doing some fraction work and we wanted to explain to you how to find a common denominator so you can do your maths. So first of all you're looking at ordering and comparing maths this week. This will work alongside a PowerPoint that I will send you or that will be on Seesaw so that you can look at that as well, that your work will be on there and you'll be able to work through. So let's have a look at how to find a common denominator. So if we have a calculation where our denominators are all the same, ordering and comparing them is easy and putting them in number sequence. So I know that 3 sevenths is 3 out of 7. I know that 5 sevenths is 5 out of 7 and I know that 2 sevenths is 2 out of 7 pieces and 6 sevenths is 6 out of 7. And I can now put those on a number line if I put 0 at the beginning of my number line and I put one whole one here I know that 7 sevenths is one whole, is the same as one whole so I know that my smallest fraction from my bar models will be um, 2 sevenths, so I'm going to put this here, 2 sevenths, followed by 3 sevenths, followed by 5 sevenths, and then 6 sevenths. And I've now put them in order, I've compared them and I've ordered them, lovely and easy. My denominator was all the same, I didn't have to worry. But what happens when you get some work where the denominators are different? Well, what you have to do is you have to find the common denominator, a multiple that both of these denominators will go into equally, and so a multiple of each of these. So first of all, let's have a think. I'm going to write out the multiples of each of these. So I'm going to do my sevens first. Seven, 14, 21, 28. I'm going to stop there because I think I will probably not need to do any more. Now my three times table. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Aha! I have found a common multiple. It's 21. So now I'm going to put both of these fractions over 21. I've found a common, both the same, denominator. How many times did I have to multiply my 7 to get to 21? 7, 14, 21, three times. I times my 7 by 3. So what I've done to my denominator, I must do to my numerator. So I'm going to multiply that by 3 as well. So 3 times 7 was 21, 3 times 5 is 15. So I've got, I've turned my 5 sevenths into 15 twenty ones. Now my 3s, how many times did I multiply my 3 to get to 21? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 3 is 21. So I know that I multiplied my 7 by 3. What I do to my denominator, I must do to my numerator. So I am going to multiply my 2 by 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Now I can clearly see that 14 20 ones comes first and 15 20 ones comes second. So that means, so I know that I've got to swap them round. So that means 5 sevenths is larger than 2 thirds. 5 sevenths is larger than 2 thirds. If I go back to my original fractions. Okay, so I have given you some instructions to help you on the next slide down. So let's have a look. I'm going to turn the camera off for a moment and I'm going to flick to this slide. So this is your steps for success to help you remember. This is on the PowerPoint with your 
um, worksheets on as well, so it's there for you, but it's also here if you want to go back and watch it again. So it says, steps for success today. Are the denominators different? If yes, follow the steps. To find a common denominator, I will. I've given you an example up here. How will you order and compare a half, two thirds and three fifths? You have got lots and lots of different, you've got three different denominators. You've got two and a three and a five. So the first thing you will do is write out your two times table, your three times table and your five times table until you get to a number which has a multiple of their times tables that is in each of them. And if you look, it's done here for you. And the multiple is actually 30. So we've got a new denominator now. The new denominator is 30. The first fraction we looked at was a half. So how many times did we have to multiply the two, the denominator, to get to our new denominator of 30? Well, we multiplied it by 15. What we did to the denominator, we must do to, do to the numerator. So we've now multiplied the numerator by 15. So now we do 15 times 1. So our half has now become 15 over 30. Do the same to the other fractions. How many times did we have to multiply 3? So now we're going to look at 2 thirds. How many times did we multiply 3 to get to our new denominator of 30? So how many 3's make 30? Well, we obviously multiplied it by 10. So 10 times 3 was 30. So now we have to multiply our numerator. 10 times 2 is 20. So I've now got 20 thirtieths. So my half, my original half, has become 15 thirtieths, and my two thirds has become 20 thirtieths. So you can already see that a half is smaller than two thirds. Then we've got three fifths. So you would carry on how many times did we multiply five to get to 30? Well, obviously it was six. So we have 30 again on the bottom. And we would then have to multiply 3 by 6. So that would be 18. So you'd have 18 thirtieths. So you would then fit that in between the two when you put them in order. I hope this helps you working out your maths this week. Go and have a look at the PowerPoint. If you've got any questions, put them onto Seesaw and, and email me on Seesaw and I will answer them for you. Have a go. We've given you classroom secrets questions, which should help you because they should um, be what you're used to in the classroom. Start with the easiest first, work your way through. There are challenge sheets. You may not get to them. You may find that the rest of the work takes up too long. You might have to need a break. Or you might find the challenge sheets are difficult. But if you want to have a go, please do. Send us some photographs through Seesaw and we will be able to mark them for you and come back to you and help you if you need help. Good luck. Enjoy your week's maths. Speak to you soon.